Hey there everyone, thank you for joining me here at Wilder Ranch State Park for the next installment of our live stream program, Hard Day's Work on the Ranch. In the next half hour, we are going to be stepping back in time to explore the labor that was required to keep this incredible thriving ranch running. I'm so glad that you're here to join me. As you saw, I just rang the bell to call all the ranch hands in for dinner, just as the cook might have. And if you remember, in some of our past live streams, we were actually hanging out in the kitchen, which is right behind me, looking at the labor of the cook, who was required to feed all 15 or 16 ranch hands and the extended Wilder family, three meals a day, six days a week, which is a lot of work. But today we're actually going to be looking at the ranch hands themselves to see what work filled their days. So thank you so much for being here. My name is Rewa. I'm a senior park aide at Wilder Ranch State Park. And it's my pleasure to be leading this live stream program of Hard Day's Work on the Ranch. Thanks to everyone who's just joining in now. Go ahead and let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from. If you want to, you can answer in the comments where you're, where you're coming from. I'm here at Wilder Ranch State Park, which is on the Central California coast. We have 7,000 acres here, which include woodlands, grasslands, um, wetlands, all the lands, <laughs> beaches, tide pools, and these buildings and animals of this historic dairy ranch. Let's see, as we go through the program, I invite you to give us your questions, share your responses in the comments below. Let us know what you're thinking. And I'll do my best to answer those questions as we go. And I'm also joined digitally today by our lead interpreter, Sky, who is going to be answering questions in text form as well as we go. So you may be aware that Wilder Ranch State Park, along with all parks in Santa Cruz County, are actually closed this weekend through April 15th, through Wednesday, in order to protect public safety during what was anticipated to be a very crowded weekend of high visitation. Now it's really hard for us to close our gates and we just thank you for your understanding and also for taking seriously the directives from local public health officials that are asking us all to stay home and save lives this weekend. So thank you for participating in that. As we're getting situated here, let me just help orient you to where we are here on the Central California coast. We are actually right now standing on native land. So right here where I have my feet is the ancestral homeland of the Awaswa speaking Weepy people. And we take a moment at the beginning of all of our programs to pay respect to the elders past and present who have been stewarding this land through the generations recognizing that we are guests here, and as guests, we have a responsibility to take good care of this place and learn how to be good stewards. The descendants of the Weepy people today are part of contemporary Native American groups, such as the Amamutsin Tribal Band, who continue to be really influential community members and leaders in our local community today and are actually at the forefront of stewardship efforts. So if you are curious to find out more about what the original stewards are doing today and learn about the Amamutsin Land Trust and the way that they're taking care of the land, I invite you to go ahead and find out more. Find their website, look up their social media, and let them tell their stories for themselves. All right. I want to say hello again to everyone who is just tuning in now. I'm Rewa, Senior Park Aide at Wilder Ranch State Park, and you are here, I'm sure, for another installment of Hard Day's Work on the Ranch, where we are going to get to explore this historic dairy ranch and uncover some of the labor that was required to keep this ranch running. Specifically today, we're talking about the ranch hands, and I'm going to go ahead and ring the dinner bell to call all the ranch hands in. All right right up above my head. It's time. It's time. 
So that was the dinner bell that the cook might have rung in order to call all the ranch hands in to the farmhouse to have dinner. But where would they have been running from? Well, we're gonna get to take a peek. It's all of the buildings surrounding me. So let's go ahead and turn around. Of this ranch. Just a little bit more. There we go. So to start out, why was Wilder Ranch called Wilder Ranch? Well, from the 1830s to about the 1960s, this piece of land here was a thriving dairy ranch. Um, it was renowned throughout California for its innovation and also for the incredibly delicious butter that they created here. The building that I was um, standing in front of just a moment ago where I rang the bell, that was the 1859 Gothic Revival farmhouse that was built by Moses Meter when he started ranching here. But later on, that house was lived in by five generations of Wilders. And it's that family that ended up giving their name to the dairy ranch. And we know it because of them today, because the Wilders were incredibly innovative and they were hardworking, and it's because of their ingenuity and the way that they were always up on the latest technology that enabled them to create a ranch that was highly successful and won fame across the state of California. But none of that could have happened, of course, without the ranch hands who were really making this place tick. And so we're going to get to explore each of these buildings and see what the ranch hands were up to and what kind of work filled their days. As we go, I invite you all to give us a shout out in the comments and let us know who you are and where you're coming from. I can already see that we have Bob from Aptos, so hi and welcome. I'd love to hear from other folks and see where you're coming from. So let's start out with the cow barn. Because of course you can't have a dairy without cows, right? So you can't see it very well from here, but right about there, just behind that tree, do you see a little bit of white? That there is the cow barn. It was built in the mm, 1860s by Moses Meter. Upstairs was a place for storing hay and feed. Downstairs we had the cows. But when the Wilders came here, they expanded that cow barn to make it twice the length of a football field. So it was enormous. And they also expanded the herd of cattle to be 300 head of Holstein cows. And Holsteins are known for their milk production. So they were really looking at how do they maximize efficiency here. This building is really incredible because it was built entirely without nails. How do you even do that? Well, it was created with mortise and tenon construction, just like a Lincoln log cabin. No nails required. So it's a really beautiful building. And it's actually under construction right now. You might be able to see that there's a little bit of a green fence in front of it. That's because we have um, a restoration happening. And we can't wait until that restoration is finished so that we can start leading tours in that barn again. Hello, Wendy from upstate New York. Hi, Auntie Wendy. So glad to have you join us. Everyone else, go ahead and give us a shout out and let us know who you are and where you're coming from. So far, we've got Aptos and New York. So we got both sides of the, the coasts. Um, so I wanna tell you the dirty little secret about this cow barn. What the Wilders did was they actually rerouted the creek that ran through this property about where I it used to run right where I was standing here but they moved it so that it would run underneath the cow barn now why would they do that well you can imagine yourself in the shoes of those ranch hands or rather in their boots needing to clean up the barn at the end of the day well if you had a little river running right through you could just sweep those cow pies right in and away they went that's the image of efficiency, at least in the late 1800s. Good thing we don't do that anymore because um, we want to protect our watershed. Uh, what else? I also, what I want to say about this cow barn is 
it was electrified. It was electrified in the 1890s, which is just a couple years after Santa Cruz had um, achieved electricity. And this was decades before electricity was common in rural parts of America. So they were ahead of their time in this way. And it was electrified thanks to Dee Dee Wilder's son, Melvin, who went off to Stanford University in order to study electrical engineering. And he brought all those skills back to the ranch to help his dad run the ranch and to electrify it. So by the early 1890s, all the buildings here had electricity and specifically in the cow barn, there were 300 incandescent bulbs, which the ranch hands could come in first thing in the morning and flip on. And it would wake up all of the cows so that they thought it was dawn before it was even dawn and it tricked them into giving more milk. So the ranch hands could actually milk those cows twice a day at 4 a.m. and at 4 p.m., increasing the yield of milk. This was again one of those innovations that the Wilders were working on in order to increase the efficiency of their ranch. But I like to imagine myself in the boots of those ranch hands, having to get up before dawn every day in order to milk those cows in the dark. Well, not in the dark, once they turned on the lights. That's a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. The next building that I want to talk about is the creamery, which you can't actually see, but it would have been right here in front of the dairy barn, but it burned down in the 1950s, so you can't see it anymore. But it would have been right behind me. And that was where the ranch hands were churning out all of this butter. So Dee Dee Wilder was well known for his innovation. He was always on the cutting edge of technology. He always wanted to be installing the latest equipment into his buildings, which included the De Laval's continuous cream separator in the creamery here. Now this cream separator enabled them to separate out the cream from the skim milk simultaneously while at the same time they were pouring in fresh milk all at the same time, so that greatly increased efficiency. They were actually the first ranch in the whole entire state to have a continuous cream separator like that. Ooh, and it looks like behind me someone is just rolling up. We actually have the construction crew who are working on the cattle barn coming out today, so you might see a little bit of activity behind me. It's kind of the most activity this park has seen all day. So back to the creamery. What do we want to say about that? I guess what I want to talk about is we had the De Laval's cream separator. We had all sorts of equipment like that that enabled them to be producing large quantities of high quality, consistent product. That's what the, this equipment enabled the ranch hands to do, such that they were able to sell their butter in San Francisco for $1 a pound at the time, which in today's money is as if we went to the grocery store and for four sticks of butter, we paid $25. So you can imagine this was the kind of product they could charge top dollar for. They were making really good stuff because of the ranch hands hard work using this kind of equipment. Okay. Next, we're going to look at the horse barn. So this building right here with the beautiful mansard style or French roof and the weather vane on top, which you can just about see. There we go. This horse barn was built in the 1890s. It has 15 horse stalls inside. And later on in the evolution of the Wilder Ranch, they actually started raising quarter horses and hosting a rodeo. So you can bet this building would have been bustling. On the ground, there's the original bitumen floor, which is a kind of early asphalt that they mined on the property. And to 
today we house in this barn our ragtag family of sheep and goats and in addition we have chickens on site on sunny days they're out in the pastures behind these buildings rainy days, those animals come into the horse barn to take shelter. And I want to take a second to just give a shout out to the staff and the volunteers who have been coming out every day, one at a time, to take care of these animals and make sure they're still fed, even through all of the turmoil that's going on, and using COVID-19 safe practices. Their hard work matters so much, and I just want to say thank you for making sure that our animals here are staying well. Next, we're going to go over here to this very important building. And I'm actually going to back you up so that you can get the full picture of it. Right. There we go. This here behind me is the bunkhouse, also built in the 1890s. This house can really, this, this building can really be seen as the heart of the ranch because this is where a lot of the innovations um, were taking place. We have three important doors here that I want to point out to you. One over here, right there, is the water-powered machine shop in the red door behind me that's the blacksmith shop and finally over on this side is the wood shop so these um these rooms were all full of equipment that was powered by water and if you all remember last week in our live stream when we were talking about indoor plumbing and laundry in the farmhouse we talked about how the wilders harnessed water power when they got here. That was one of the first things they did when they got here. And good thing they did because it enabled them to do some amazing work. What they did was they built a reservoir, a 500,000 gallon reservoir, just up the hill behind this building. It was about the size of an Olympic swimming pool. And all of that water was conducted down through 4,000 feet of seven inch pipe all the way to this building. And by the time it reached the bunkhouse, it had built up 95 pounds of pressure, which is about 20 horses worth of power that they used to turn a Pelton water wheel. That's right inside this building. And that water wheel then powered a bunch of pulleys and leather belts, set them spinning, and that powered a whole bunch of equipment, including a drill press, a lathe, and an emery wheel in the machine shop. It also powered a barley crusher and hay and feed cutters in the granary. And it also powered the famous cream separator and milk coolers and butter churns in the dairy. So all of that could be automated. It didn't have to be done by hand anymore because of water power. It's pretty amazing. And if you can again put yourself in the boots of those ranch hands who are getting up before dawn every day in order to milk the cows, what is something that we all need first thing in the morning to wake ourselves up and get ourselves going? What do you all need first thing in the morning? Coffee, right? So did the ranch hands. So, I'm not kidding you, believe it or not, Inside the machine shop behind me, right next to the Pelton water wheel, is a water-powered coffee grinder. The tools of the trade, you know? You need what you need in order to get the job done. So I want to also talk to you about the blacksmith shop behind these red doors. It was also water-powered, although today it's powered by gas. But something that you would notice if you were standing here with me today is that there's no Ace Hardware around the corner, no Home Depot. If the ranch hands broke something on the ranch, 
This is where they would have to come to fix it. They couldn't go elsewhere. They had to do it themselves using the forge in the blacksmith shop and using the machine shop and the wood shop. And you can imagine the repair work was probably never done. Next, I want to address the fact that this is called the bunkhouse, but we haven't actually talked about why it's called the bunkhouse. We know downstairs there are all the workshops, but what about upstairs in these windows? That was the bunk room. That was the room where all of the ranch hands lived, all in one room. All 15 or 16 of them, depending. Hmm. Compare that to the eight bedroom Gothic Revival farmhouse behind me, where the Wilders lived, all four of them, and the cook. So clearly, although this was a very prosperous ranch, being here as a ranch hand was not luxurious living. It was hard work from before dawn all the way until dusk, and they lived simply. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this program, we rang the dinner bell that would have been rung at dusk to call all the ranch hands in from their hard work to come and have dinner inside the farmhouse. Right inside that door is where they would have run in. So let's go on inside and see the seats where the ranch hands would have been sitting themselves. We are in the ranch hands dining room. This is where they would have had three meals a day before they had to tromp back out to their various tasks around the ranch. Now records don't actually tell us a lot about who would have been sitting in these chairs right here. We do know that a lot of the ranch hands came from Portugal and Switzerland but there isn't a lot more information about who they were. What records do show, however, is evidence of a good relationship between the Wilder family and the ranch hands. And maybe you can imagine, as far as ranches go, this would have been a pretty great place to work. After all, it was state of the art. They had all the equipment that they could need. They weren't churning that butter by hand. They had water power butter churns, the continuous cream separator, the drill press, all of these things that made their work easier and more efficient. And also, because this was a very profitable ranch, if there ever was a large repair that needed to be, needed to be done or they needed new equipment, they could purchase it. So they really had the tools here to do the job that they needed to do and to do it well. And in the end, we can't ever really know exactly what it was like to be in the boots of these ranch hands. But we can know that this was a place where we saw a lot of good, hard work. And that there is the end of our program for today. I'm so glad that you all were able to join me to take another look at Wilder Ranch State Park these buildings truly have an infinite number of stories that we can explore. And I can't wait for you to join us next Sunday for the next installment of Hard Day's Work on the Ranch. In the meantime, I'm Rewa, Senior Park Aide at Wilder Ranch State Park. Thank you all so much for joining. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. Wishing all of your families a beautiful rest of your weekend. Take care.